That's drunk. Hello, a couple months ago I posted a video about other games that played like Super Metroid. Credit to Brian for the idea, and I want to try using that same structure for another video about another game. This time about The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and I'm not limiting the selections to Super Nintendo either. We can go all over the place with this, to the Master System, to TurboGrafx-16, we can even cover a couple modern releases too. And again, I'm not trying to imply that any of these games are quite as good as something like Link to the Past, it's just a simple way of saying, hey, did you like that game? Then you might like these games too. Let's get the most obvious stuff out of the way right away. If you want to find another game like Link to the Past, then just stay in the Zelda series, duh, with stuff like A Link Between Worlds for 3DS, Link's Awakening for the original Game Boy, and the Link's Awakening remake for Switch. Link's Awakening in particular is my personal favorite Zelda game. I really like the playful yet strangely dark vibe it has, and the game is very cleverly structured in a way that makes it ahead of its time. It's an almost perfect pick-up-and-play Game Boy-style game, and while I haven't played the remake since I don't have a Switch, if it's anything like the original, then it's quality stuff. Link Between Worlds is another Zelda game that has a similar style to Link to the Past, but it introduces new mechanics like being able to bypass obstacles by scaling walls, and it brings a new dimension to solving puzzles that's a lot of fun. And while the game does does have its flaws, I'm not all that thrilled with the weapon rental system for instance, it's still a high quality playthrough. I also want to include a couple not-so-obvious Zelda titles that are available in the form of ROM hacks. Well, kind of. Legend of Zelda 3rd Quest and 4th Quest were originally made for the Nintendo Stateleview attachment only available in Japan, and it's pretty much just new maps and new dungeons made for the original Legend of Zelda with revamped graphics and other smaller touches like being able to collect 999 rupees instead of maxing out at 255. It's kind of cool because it's pretty much like if the original Zelda got the Mario All-Stars treatment, plus you even get to play as both Link or Zelda, so that's cool. The ROM hacks disabled certain things that were there for the original broadcast, like the time limit, so these are a little more open-ended and play more like traditional Zelda games. Alright, let's take a look at some other Super Nintendo titles, and I'm sure I'm opening a huge can of worms by saying this, but I'd like to stay away from action RPGs and just focus on action-adventure games that have an emphasis on puzzle solving, since Link to the Past has more in common with that than it does with any role-playing game stuff. Another solid action-adventure title is Brain Lord. That's another top-down puzzle-solving game, and yeah, there's only five dungeons here, but they are gigantic. This game was developed by the same folks who made Seventh Saga, so yeah, this game is pretty dang hard, and I won't mince words here, some of the puzzles here will drive you absolutely insane, but I still think this is a solid title that has a lot going for it if you're into games like this. If you're looking for something a little more laid back, and something you can play with a second player, then there's Goof Troop. I love this game because it can be completed in an afternoon, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. There's some tricky stuff here you gotta deal with. I've talked about this game a ton over the years, and I still feel like it gets overlooked or dismissed because it's a Disney game, but rest assured, it's one of the very best multiplayer games for the Super Nintendo. There's also the Twisted Tales of Spike McFang. You play as a vampire that prefers tomatoes to blood, and defeats enemies with his magic hat. Yeah, that sounds goofy, and uh, it is. This game has a great sense of humor that really carries the experience here. Be forewarned though, don't be fooled by the visuals because this game is really tough. Still, if you're looking to get your fix for a top-down action-adventure style game and you haven't played this one, it's well worth checking out. Next, there's Super Famicom games that never left Japan, like Gunpro Gunman's Proof. This is one of the very best games to never leave Japan, and it's never received any kind of remake or port to any other console or handheld. You'll probably need an English patch for this one, but it's a fantastic game featuring a Wild West science fiction motif complete with an upgradable gun you shoot at enemies. This one's more of a top-down shooter than it is Link to the Past, but the visual similarities and room scrolling are way too similar to ignore. This is another game that's got a very light-hearted vibe. It's a short playthrough, but it's well worth playing playing any way you can. Here's another unusual Super Famicom game for the time. It's called Marvelous Mohitotsu no Takarajima, or Marvelous Another Treasure Island. In this one, you solve puzzles by controlling a party of three. You switch between the characters using the R button, and each character has a special ability unique to them. It's kind of like a top-down version of The Lost Vikings. You'll definitely need an English patch for this one, but as you can see, there are a ton of visual similarities to Link to the Past here. The sprite design is very similar, even stuff like the dash mechanic and the way your characters bounce off of stuff is just like how it is in Link to the Past. I guess it's no coincidence that the director of this game went on to become the director of the Zelda series starting with Ocarina of Time. But yeah, if you really dig puzzle-solving games with this kind of vibe, then definitely check out Marvelous. 
Now, let's move on to the Sega Genesis, and the most obvious choice here is going to be Beyond Oasis, otherwise known as the Story of Thor. This is a really good action-adventure title because of the range of your character's functionality. You can run, jump, duck, use magic, execute special moves using fighting game style inputs, and do all sorts of other cool stuff to solve puzzles and defeat enemies. Plus, this game looks and sounds incredible for a 16-bit game. This is a polished, well-designed game with a really fun combat system, and it's well worth playing if you haven't already. Another great Genesis title is Crusader of Senti, otherwise known as Soleil, and this one went largely ignored at the time it was released, since it came around super late in the Genesis lifespan. But yeah, just take one glance at this one, and you immediately get a Link to the Past vibe. But this is hardly a mere Zelda clone. For one thing, your character loses the ability to communicate with humans and you can only talk to animals and flowers, so he uses this to his advantage by recruiting up to 16 different creatures to help him out and lend their abilities to make you faster, stronger, or more agile. When coming up with ideas for this video, this was the first game I thought of. It should be a no-brainer that if you dig Link to the Past, you dig Crusader of Senti. Hey, this wouldn't be a proper SNES drunk video if I didn't violate my own rules, but I'll take any excuse I can to talk about Crystallis. Yeah, it's more of an action RPG than an action-adventure puzzle solver, but hey, when some people think of Link to the Past, they think of just good old-fashioned hack-and-slash top-down action. The more time that goes by and the more games I play over the years, the more I really appreciate this one for standing out as something a little different, not just with the story, but with the gameplay and the dungeons as well. I really think this is a top 10 NES game of all time, and it's aged extremely well. And hey, if you think of Link to the Past as an action title first and foremost, and you're just looking to get more sword swing action, then you won't find many better than Crystallis. Let's stick with 8-bit titles, only this time on the Sega Master System. And here's a game that was never released in North America called Pit Pot the Magical Castle. If you like dungeon crawlers akin to the first Legend of Zelda, then you'll dig this game. The goal is to rescue the princess, because of course it is. But it's not just a simple matter of finding her in this castle. You gotta find a cross that prevents her from turning into a witch, you gotta find a potion to wake her up, and a ring so she can taunt Charles Barkley. Okay, it's to marry her. You don't win an NBA title in this game, unfortunately, but still, this is a very simple arcade exploration puzzle game that's good for what it is, and it's worth pointing out because it was never released in the US. Sticking with the Master System, there's also Golvelius Valley of Doom, and while this game was developed by Compile, it was published by Sega, and I think it's safe to say this was more or less Sega's first attempt at promoting their own version of Zelda, so to speak. And yeah, there may be more RPG elements here than most Zelda games, but this is still a solid playthrough. It's your typical action-adventure structure here, with having to defeat seven bosses, guarding mystical crystals or whatever, before you have to fight the evil Golvelius. This game is pretty linear, you have to get through the seven dungeons in order, but as you learn new abilities, you can backtrack to find items and reveal new secrets. Now, since this is an RPG-ish action-adventure game from the late 80s, that means it's pretty dang grind-heavy, so keep that in mind. But still, Golvelius is a fun time and worth checking out. The TurboGrafx-16 had their own attempts at replicating the Zelda formula with two games called Newtopia and Newtopia 2, and yep, what you see is what you get here. These games are pretty blatant Zelda clones, for better or for worse. There's bombs to blow up walls to find hidden areas, there's an item to light up dark rooms, there's a fire wand, all that good stuff. The main difference with the first game is that instead of one big overworld, the game is separated into four different overworlds that have two dungeons each, and you have to either locate the item you need or solve the puzzle there in order to move on to the next world. The second game is a bit more polished since you're not limited to moving in just four directions, and there's more weapons for you to use in that one. Either way, both games are solid playthroughs. Here's kind of an interesting one called God of Thunder, made by one person, Ron Davis, back in 1993, and it was originally made as shareware for DOS, but it's now available for free on archive.org. This has your typical Zelda structure here with puzzles and objects to move around, and a pretty huge map that you have to navigate. This is one of those games I just like to point out because it's pretty dang obscure. Is it the best game ever? No. But if you dig top-down action games with puzzle solving, this will definitely scratch that itch. Let's tackle a couple modern games, starting with Neon City Riders. Here we leave behind the sword and sorcery motif with an almost Streets of Rage style setting, where you play as Casey J I mean Rick, who wants to clean up the mean streets of Neon City, and you do this by, well, wandering around until you figure out what to do. If you like top-down action games, this game's got it in spades, with all sorts of attacks you can obtain, and man oh man this game is tough. Just look at the sheer amount of stuff coming at your character. This game is definitely flawed in some ways, for instance it's not all that forthcoming 
coming about where you're supposed to go, but still, this game definitely has a Zelda-like vibe when it comes to the gameplay. Finally, there's Hyper Light Drifter. This is a unique game because of its visual style. I'm not sure I've ever seen a game that looks quite like this one does, and the gameplay is like a cross between Zelda and Diablo. This is one of the best modern games I've played in the last few years. It's a good balance between an open world structure and the typical dungeon format you see in games like Link to the Past. But again, like Neon City Riders, this game is really hard, but I would much rather play Hyper Light Drifter. The enemy patterns you'll encounter can be really challenging, but it's never unfair. Each enemy is almost like their own little puzzle. Puzzle. It's really cool. This is a game where the graphics, music, gameplay, and difficulty combine for a really rewarding experience that'll remind you of the old days, back when you first played Link to the Past. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.